Life is a game of chances. We can't ever know what is in store and instead we can only improve the decisions that we make over time to give ourselves the best chances of success. It's incredibly easy and natural to get lost in the day-to-day events and emotions that overwhelm us. Losing my sight, losing my mind, wish somebody would tell me I'm fine. Well, actually, Papa Roach, you should be wishing for somebody to tell you to be rational. In this game of chance that we call life, rationality is very hard to hold on to. When we lose it, we can be prone to reactive emotions, knee-jerk biases, and just destructive habits. If instead we learn to think in bets, we can become very confident, calm, compassionate, and successful in the long run. Hello and welcome to the Growth Mindset Podcast. This is your boy Sam Jam, aka Sam Webster Harris. Now, two years ago, I had Annie Duke on the podcast. She is a former World Series poker champion, psychologist, and author of the book Thinking in Bets. She's a really fascinating human and we had a great conversation. It's definitely worth a listen to if you didn't already listen to it. But I certainly didn't ask her too much about the book because I feel like you can read it or I can actually break down that information myself at a separate time like I'm doing now. And I'd rather ask her unique insights on things that aren't already available somewhere. Now I am finally getting around to breaking down the book because it has so many useful mindset lessons that... I think are totally helpful for anyone that is into mindset, rationality, and success. Firstly, I think it is worth understanding the incredible story that led Annie into the world of poker, as it's a perfect demonstration of chance and dealing rationally with the curveballs that life throws at us. As a young lady, Annie Duke studied psychology and she worked long days and longer nights on her PhD application to basically fulfill her dream of pursuing a career in the leading researcher in psychology. And she was overjoyed when she was accepted onto the PhD program. But little did she know that life was about to turn in a very different direction. A month before she started her PhD, she fell really ill and her passion was deferred for at least a year. With her condition, she was unable to take on normal regular work and She just often would become like really, really tired for days. And she felt lost and a bit abandoned by the world. Her brother, however, used to play poker. He helped her to start playing poker in the evenings to try and make ends meet. She could play when she had the energy to work and take rest whenever she needed to because there's no like time limit or boss. It was certainly risky, but it fit her random and unem unemployable schedule. If she controlled her emotions and kept a level head whilst playing, she could actually make a good living. While she started playing poker, she met so many interesting characters in this year out and was beginning to master the skill of staying rational in a game of continuously changing chances. And she was beginning to learn a steady recipe for success in both poker and in life. Every hand that you're dealt is a new array of data on her competitors and her own playing skills. And within the year, she was doing so well as a player that she thought this is actually a good opportunity. She would learn so much about life and psychology that she decided to defer longer and stick with this unexpected profession that she had no life plans for before. Fast forward a few years and Annie Duke became the most successful female poker player in history. Just an amazing player full stop. This teaches us that it is easy to jump to conclusions and judge the hands that life deals us as like a bad thing or a good thing. But actually, staying rational and just playing with the cards that we have is a timeless lesson on not judging our situation too quickly because you never know what life has in store for you. A nice parable. But Annie has so many more lessons for us that that's we are going to learn from. Annie has two life rules for unreasonable success and three mental models for greater wisdom. So let's start with the first life rule. Always seek truth. Annie fully accepted that her natural talent might not actually have been exceptional. Where she excelled was her ability to seek truth and learn from every action that happened. Her acceptance that she would make mistakes often led her to develop a mindset that took her far beyond her other peers that were playing poker. Because it's a natural human tendency to attribute our wins to our skill and our losses to bad luck. 
We'll look at our competitors and attribute their losses to incompetency and their wins to just good fortune. So Annie always tried to do the reverse of this view. He'd hold regular feedback chats with mentors to examine new insights, assume that competitors had better strategies that her, she wasn't using, and always look for ways that her losses could be reduced. And they just always meant that she was seeking truth as opposed to just assuming that she was like smarter than others and really set her up for success. The second rule that was just an unforgivable thing to do was to chase your losses. And perhaps the biggest risk to a poker player is to seek for a win during a losing streak. It's called chasing your losses. In a game where you're getting crippled, it's really hard to leave because when you've had a bunch of bad luck, you feel like statistically there's going to be some good cards coming your way soon, but you get caught up in the moment and you lose sight and you lose rationality. You can ignore the bad decisions that you're making and buying back into these games is a great way to lose all your money because the other players will already have more leverage than you because they have more money and it's just... You're just spiraling downwards and the best thing to do is just stop. So she formed an accountability group with some other friends that played and they always had to explain their wins and losses each week. And if you have to tell your peers that you paid to get back into a game on a day where you were losing and confess that you were chasing a loss, it was just sacrilege in the group. Like even if you ended up winning after paying back in, you just lost respect of the rest of your peers. And so reckless behavior was recognized for what it was and loss of respect from your peers was a motivating drive to keep your head sane instead of getting lost in the moment. Doing that just meant that you would never chase your losses. Okay, that might not seem directly applicable to your life if you're not playing games where you're going to be seeking losses, but maybe you invest in the stock market or you do other things with your money. And I'm going to break down more of the mental models of where this could apply to you in your life after the break. Now, as I said, we're going to go into the three mental models for greater wisdom. We just learned that her two rules for success are always seek truth and don't chase losses. She learned so many mental models that kept her in check. And these three are my favorite concepts that she learned about humans and decision making, accepting the losses as they are and having awareness to see when good luck shines down on you and making the most of it. The first is a slightly hard one to get your head around. So I'm going to try and do my best to explain this. Essentially, the people are often unaware that wisdom is just consistent good choices over the long term. And a good decision is the wisest choice given the current information that you have, which is all that we can do. And success is the accumulation of these wise choices, plus some luck and hard work over time. Now, I think the fact that it sounds obvious is the bit where we get tripped up on because I'll now explain why it isn't obvious. So let's say you have a poker hand that statistically will win 20% of the time and lose 80% of the time. That is a bad hand to play. Like most of the time you're going to lose. But every one of five times that you play, that hand will actually win. So the wise choice, the sensible choice, is to bet against it winning every time. However, Sometimes you'll bet against it winning and you will lose 20% of the time making the right choice will actually lose. And so in life, we often make decisions based on a reasonable prediction of an outcome, but we're always taking a risk with any choice and it could still go wrong even when we make the best choice. And if our decision leads to a failure, we might beat ourselves up about it. It's possible that we made the best choice statistically. And conversely, the opposite can happen. We could make a terrible choice statistically that should definitely be the, the losing choice most of the time, but sometimes it pays off. Sometimes it works out. However, when we do something that statistically shouldn't work, but does, people often tell us how wise we are. And we don't go around beating ourselves up for being foolish and making a bad choice because technically we just made a bad choice. Instead, we celebrate our tenacity and our luck for winning something. So before we ever make any choices, what we should be doing is stating our predictions so that we can see the truth behind the wins and the failures that we have in life. So things like journaling or having an accountability peer group can be very, very powerful. And if you remember her accountability group would frown on players who bought back in during 
a losing streak when statistically they were going to make their life worse. Because statistically, that's just a way to lose all your money. It might happen to win, but not because you're a sensible player, because you're an idiot that got lucky. Instead of jumping to incorrect conclusions, we can build rationality and good decision making into our interpretation of fate. So remember, wisdom is good decision making over time based on statistics and information that we have available to us. It's not whether we happen to win or lose in a given moment. Right. Next mental model. Question common knowledge. Humans are reasoning machines. To attract a mate, we need to come across like we have a good grasp on reality and that we know what's going on. And we don't like to be wrong. Thus, we prefer to come up with explanations of why we are correct. It's very counterintuitive to look to see where we are wrong. Humans also evolve to learn very quickly from others and accept the wisdom of the tribe. This helps us to function in society. If we hear a few people saying the same thing, it actually quickly gets written into our internal facts database. We are inbuilt to believe things that most people believe. We actually really don't question common knowledge. You might think that this isn't true, but it is. When we take in information, we think that we screen it, but actually lots of information just seeps into our subconscious. For example, we were never shown a scientific paper that told us that one human year equals seven dog years, or that men inherit boldness from their maternal father. Those are just things that everyone kind of knows in like the ether of common knowledge. And actually, neither of those facts are true. And uh, if you're interested in boldness, uh, sadly, guys, it's inherited on the X chromosome and Anywhere in your family, if someone is bald, it will increase your chance of being bald, um, which sucks for me. Anyway, <laughs> the point is most of us believe these things because we've just heard it so many times and so many people seem to agree that we didn't ever like go and work out where we got that knowledge from. It's just kind of around. This is such an important insight. I love questioning things that we're told. I'd like to think I do a good job of doing it sometimes, but actually I don't do it nearly enough. And this has really given me license to be much more curious and be like, why do people think this? So, um, basically being aware of common knowledge and how wrong it often is, is just very useful. A nice quote from Stephen Jay Gould is the most erroneous stories are those that we think we know best and therefore never scrutinize or question. So. Question common knowledge and don't make assumptions. And then the final mental model is the concept of asking for a bet. Because as humans, we are full of biased opinions that we don't realize we have, that we can reverse these a little by challenging them. But sadly, we often aren't challenged. If someone asks us if we want to bet, it suddenly casts a cloud of doubt upon the thing that we were assuming. So let's say that I'd ask you if you wanted a bet that male baldness is inherited from the mother's father. You might not so blindly lean into your assumptions straight away. You might take some second chances to consider like, where did you actually learn about this male baldness fact? And are you sure it's really true? Could something else be true after all? Like, do you perhaps believe it as much as to lose money on it? And does the person asking you if you want to bet know something that you don't? So suddenly being asked if you want to bet creates this natural flow of thinking that pushes against the river of blind belief in your mind. And a bet is a great screen for how solid a belief really is. We take so much for granted that's actually wrong. And covering just a few of our poor assumptions and biases is such a useful result over the long term. So remember to always challenge others and yourself to make a bet on your beliefs. And in the words of Derek Sivers, don't try to be more right, just be less wrong. Avoiding failure leads to success. The winner is usually the one with the least mistakes. Okay, those were my favorite rules for success and thinking models from Ali Duke's book, Thinking in Bets. I haven't done a book breakdown like this on the podcast before, so let me know if you found it useful. Uh, as I'm a podcaster, we do love having a rating and a comment because it's always appreciated. 
If you would like to hear the original interview with Annie Duke, that was episode number 163. And until next time, if you want to enjoy your life, that starts with enjoying today. Thank <laughs> you.